we'll spend the next 30, 35 minutes or so in the book of Matthew. Um, that's where we're going to take off from. We're going to be in several, several different places. I was, I was thinking a while ago, um, uh, you've heard me say this before, I'm sure, but the, the way I'm going to bring the message tonight reminds me of uh, a whole lot of how I have prepared and preached when I first started out in the ministry. It's what we call a topical message. Um, there is different kinds of preaching. Expositional is line upon line and precept upon precept. It's, it's a lot easier for me to teach that way, teach through a book in the Bible, something like that, than it is to preach. But my favorite way of preaching is textual where you just stay with the text. You, you've got a message and you just stay in the text. But uh, tonight I'm preaching on a topic, and uh, the topic is mercy. And the Lord put this in my heart when I was listening to Brother Steve's, uh, I call it a broadcast, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think you were getting down close to the end, Brother Steve, when you mentioned Hebrews 4, um, when it talks about, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might, might obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And, uh, you know, I, I love listening to other men preach and teach the Word of God because uh, very seldom do, do I listen to someone that God doesn't give me a seed thought. And I want you to think about where we're at in the world right now. We need God's mercy. And uh, we need the Lord to be merciful. And um, I want you to, in, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 7, I'm going to have to, uh, to get started. Uh, my wife, when we get ready to go somewhere, we're both kind of homebodies. We love to be around the house and uh, love to be at home. But uh, she has a saying when we leave home, she'll say, let's go so we can get back. And uh, so let's get started so we can get done. Amen. Uh, finished, Miss Eve. Amen. When I say done, I'm supposed to say finished, you'll let me know that that's what you do in the oven to get something done. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 7, Jesus has given the Beatitudes, and he said this, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, I don't know about you, but I want the blessings of God on my life. And... Um, as we study this topic tonight, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. In, in David's song, in 2 Samuel 22 and verse 26, the Bible said, With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. And I'm interested tonight in this uh, idea, this thought of, of God's mercy and uh, I hope that what the Lord's put in our heart will be a blessing. Pray with me for just a moment. Father, thank you tonight for our people. Lord, I don't know if others sense it or not, but there's a sweet spirit in this place. And God, we're grateful for the Holy Ghost of God. And Lord, we understand tonight when you come down among your people that you said, Lord, where two or three are gathered together, in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Lord, when you're in the midst, it's going to be good. I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, God, for God's youngins. We pray, Lord, that, Lord, you just help us, and God will give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't plan on doing this. I did not plan on it. But I want you to know what a blessed fellow that I am. I got a message this morning, and I'll save this. I'll probably... Uh, get Brother Jim or somebody to help me to put it on a jump drive, get it off my phone in case my phone crashes. But I got a message this morning from a man by the name of David Caldwell. Uh, Brother John was here tonight. Brother John, is I think he went down and preached in this church at Long's Bend. You all are familiar with Brother Larry Lilly. Brother Larry has preached down at Long's Bend several times. How old would you guess Brother David is, honey? 45? maybe 50, okay, and, uh, and uh, Brother David, just a dear, a dear friend, and I, I want to, I want to give you, I want to let you listen to this message. Brother David, uh, David, uh, I just uh, was 
going over the floors at the dust bowl thing. I thought, well, I ain't talked to Brother Reed. I see how Reed can ease doing that. Uh, you don't have to call me back, brother. I'm on my 99th time reading the Bible all the way through there, and I'm on the, let's see, I'm on about the 22nd chapter of Numbers, and it just gets, as Pat Hammer says, it just gets sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. I just wanted to say, hey, you all was doing. Hope y'all doing all right. And, uh, uh, when the hot rose are strode over yonder with butter, me and butter Rick will be there with our mouths wide open there to lap them up there. The bud covers and says, we'll lay them in the shade. So love <laughs> y'all, brother. You and these and your family, God bless you. Stay safe. Love y'all. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye. Amen. Is that a blessing or what? Does anybody here know Brother David? I tell you, you need to get to know him. I'll try to get him up here sometime to testify, tell about the goodness of the Lord. Hey, you know him, Brother Cold. You ever been around him? You, you won't do after that, don't you, brother? Amen. And uh, I, I'm just telling you, God's been merciful to this preacher. And he's given me some wonderful friends along the way. Amen. And I appreciate you being here tonight so very much. I want to look at, I guess, four or five different things tonight. The first thing tonight is mercy defined. What is it? Uh, if you look at uh, the word that's used here in the book of Matthew, in the Greek language, you would pronounce it eleho, and it means to be compassionate. It means by word or deed, especially, listen to me, by divine grace. When you're showing mercy to someone else, I believe, beloved, it's by the grace of God. There's nothing in a human being apart from God that wants to be merciful. We want revenge. We, we want to get even as a human being. And I believe that's why Paul said in one place, he said, to whom I forgave anything, he said, in the person of Christ forgave I it. Amen. And so it, we see it defined. It means to have compassion, pity on, to have, obtain, receive, or show mercy. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I want to say tonight, just, just a little bit, as we define mercy. When a person shows mercy to someone else, they're not digging in that anymore. you got to let it go. Now, we don't have the capacity like God does just to be able to completely forget about something. Amen? But I tell you what we can. We can completely forgive in the person of Christ. We can just let it alone. Amen? And leave it there and uh, not be bringing it up anymore. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17, when we're thinking about mercy, you can't hardly think about it apart from the Lord. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him, this is talking about Jesus, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. You say, preacher, what's so important about that? That's why he came down here. That's why he took on himself a body of flesh. Amen. And now he knows. The Bible said he's was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. He's able to secure. He's able to comfort because he knows where you and I walk, where you and I live, and what you and I face in this walk of life. It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest. I want to ask you a question tonight. How many believes God's merciful? How many believes he's faithful? Amen. I tell you what I've never done. I've never fell on my knees and called on the Lord and heard something go, meh, 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 meh. I've never heard a recording saying he's too busy. Amen. But he's always there, amen, when we call upon him because he's a merciful God. He's a faithful God. He's right there in a time of need, Brother Steve, that Hebrews talked about. I want you to uh, go with me now in your heart and your mind for just a few moments. If, if I ask you the question tonight, and this has happened several times in the last year or so, that God's put it in my heart just to look for the first mention of something in the Bible. It, it, there's there's an, the importance about that because 
when, the, when there's something mentioned in the word of God, that theme is carried out all the way through the scripture. Does anybody have any idea tonight? And I'm not putting you on the spot. I didn't know. Does anybody have any idea where mercy is first pictured in the word of God? Does anybody have an idea? Well, we would all probably say you're not going to get out of the book of Genesis, amen, without seeing God's mercy. Well, I want to look at the mention of it, though. I believe God had mercy on Adam and Eve when he slew the animals, amen, but that's not the first mention. Uh, If you'll turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter number 19 tonight, for the first mention of being merciful in the word of God. Genesis chapter number 19. I want to read a few verses of scripture. So I'll turn over there. Let's look beginning in verse number 15. I'm glad he's faithful. He, he's been merciful. And he will be merciful. Watch what the word of God said in verse 15. The Bible said. And when the morning arose. The angels hastened Lot. Now let me ask you something. Here's a man that didn't even have a testimony. Here's a man that seemed like his son's-in-law to want, as one that mocked. Do you remember that in the Word of God? How many believes that God showed Lot mercy and getting him by the hand and getting him out of Sodom and Gomorrah? He, he showed Lot mercy. He showed Lot's wife mercy. He showed Lot's girls mercy. Watch what the Word of God said. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand. Can you believe, listen to me, can you believe that you would get an announcement like this from the angel of the Lord and yet linger? And the word of God said the angels got him by the hand, amen, and led him out. You say, preacher, what is that a picture of? That's a picture of the mercy of God. Amen. Let's look at it. The word of God said here, while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife, upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. Now listen, that might not mean a whole lot to you tonight. But if you'll think about where you were when you were lost and undone on your way to hell without God, I'm telling you, God didn't come by in judgment. Judgment, what happened at the cross. God came by in mercy because of what his son had accomplished and given his life. And the Bible said here, and by the way, beloved, many of us lingered way too long. Say amen. And God just kept a coming and kept a coming and kept a dealing and kept a dealing in his mercy until that day came when we said yes to the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Watch it here now. He said, here he said, and while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. I want you to see this. Watch this now. And it came to pass when they had brought uh, them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto him, I I can't believe Lot would say anything. But God is going to continue to have mercy. Your life has just been spared, Lot. Your wife's life has just been spared. You don't have a bargaining chip, Lot. But he does. Watch watch the mercy of God. He said, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace uh, in thy sight. And thou hast, watch this, not only shown mercy, but Lot realized that God had magnified his mercy. I want to ask you something tonight. How many have the Holy Ghost living in you? You know what we ought to do in this dark time that we live in? We ought to ask God to give us an opportunity in our lives, in front of somebody that don't know Jesus Christ in the free pardon of sin, that, I, that his mercy might be magnified through our lives. We say, preacher, why would you want it magnified? So somebody can see it. Yeah. Amen. So somebody can see the compassion and the mercy of God in action. The word of God here said here, he said, it magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. I cannot escape, not escape to the mountain lest some evil take me and I die. Well, I tell you, Lot and I are just exactly opposite. Lot wanted to go to a little city. I'd have took the mountain, say amen. 
any day. Amen. But anyway, God is giving us the picture of mercy right here. Um, I, I, I've always heard, how many's ever heard St. Francis? And I, I've always said it of a sissy. How many's ever heard that term? Nobody? Uh, but Miss Eve said, and I Googled it, Charity did for me, it's, you're supposed to say a sissy. Well, whatever. Amen. But anyway, there's this man uh, uh, that they call Francis, and he was riding a horse down the road. Uh, that, that uh, went by a leper hospital situated uh, far from Assisi. For then, as in biblical times, lepers were a rejected lot. Francis was not yet the saint of history. He, he had not been, been, been converted. He was still caught between the lure of wealth and glory and the life of the discipleship. As he rode along, he was absorbed in his thoughts. Suddenly, the horse jerked to the side of the road. With difficulty, Francis pulled him back on course. But as Francis looked up, he re recoiled at the sight of a leper in the middle of the road. He was a gray specter with stained face and shaved head, dressed in gray sackcloth. He did not speak and showed no sign of moving or getting out of the way. He looked at the horseman fixedly, strangely, with an acute and penetrating gaze. An instant that seemed like an eternity passed. Slowly, Francis dismounted, went to the man, took his hand. It was a poor, emaciated hand, blood-stained and cold, like that of a corpse. Francis pressed the hand and brought it to his lips. As he kissed the lacerated flesh of the creature, who was the most abject, the most hated, the most scorned of all human beings. He was flooded with a wave of emotion that shut out everything around him. This was an early step in Francis' conversion, which took many months, but it taught him that following Christ may require doing some things that are repulsive to us. What Francis didn't know was that something greater was prompting him, allowing him to do that which, humanly speaking, he was incapable of doing. I believe, beloved, listen, that's what real mercy is. It's when God has to do it. You can't do it without God. God has to do it through you. That's really what showing mercy uh, to someone is. Uh, you say, preacher, I wouldn't have walked up to a leper like that. Honey, you and I are a lot worse shaped than that leper when he found us. Say amen. Uh, we were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, in the rags of our sin. He came, uh, thank God, and kissed us uh, and picked us up and washed us off and gave us a place in the kingdom of God. What a blessing that is tonight since God showed us such mercy. Don't you reckon we ought to be showing mercy to others? You say, well, preacher, you don't know the wrong they've done. No, you're right. But I know the wrong I did. And I know the mercy that he brought to me. Say amen. And we ought to be able to show mercy one to another. Think about this. Just a picture, a mercy picture. We looked at Lot. We looked at this little illustration. Think about the prodigal son. The prodigal said, give me what's coming to me. He went out and wasted it on riotous living. The brother, if you haven't caught this, uh, but he said he wasted it with harlots. Now, I don't know how the brother knew that. I guess news gets around. You know what I mean about how the brother had lived. I'll tell you one thing that news did not do. It didn't keep the father from looking for him. It didn't keep the father from falling on him and running to him and kissing him and saying, get the fatted calf ready. We're going to celebrate. This my son was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. You know what the father did? He showed mercy on his son. That son, Brother Grizzle, rehearsed over and over. He said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to say, Dad, uh, Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. Uh, just make me as a hired servant. He rehearsed it over and over. He knew what he was going to say. But I tell you, the Father of mercies will have no part of that. He said, you're my son. And I'm going to give you a seat at the table. What a blessing, amen. Mercy, the picture. What about Joseph? You want to see a picture of mercy? 
You think about how that he showed mercy to his brethren. He had opportunity to get even. Amen. He had opportunity to get even. He had an opportunity to exact vengeance upon his brethren. But he told his brethren, he said, you meant it to me for evil. He said, but that's not what's in my heart. He said, God meant it for good. To save much people alive. Uh, Joseph understood, beloved, listen, that God had been merciful to him. He had delivered him from the pit. He had delivered him, my friend, from Potiphar's house. Uh, He had delivered him from the prison. Uh, And now he's in the palace. Uh, And God, uh, Joseph knew that God was a God that was faithful in his mercy. And Joseph showed mercy to his brethren. What a blessing that is. David showed mercy. You remember David? You remember after that Saul died and Jonathan died, David said one day, he said, is there any left to the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? He said, preacher, I don't know why God had mercy on you. I'll tell you why. For Jesus' sake. Amen. That's why I had mercy on you. That's why I had mercy on me. It's because Christ took our sin to the cross. And Jonathan said, or David said, is there any left in the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? You know the story. They said, there's one Mephibosheth. He's lame on both of his feet. He's down there in Lodabar. And I tell you, David sent for him uh, and he made him a place at the king's table. You say, preacher, what did he do? He showed mercy on a man that didn't deserve it, a man that couldn't earn it. Uh, That's what the mercy of God is, amen. Giving it to somebody that does not deserve it. Oh, blessed Lord, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. The Bible said, blessed are the merciful but they shall obtain mercy. You know why I want to be merciful? Look at me, because I need mercy. You say, I don't need no mercy, preacher. You better quit lying to yourself. You can't even make it through a day without God's mercy, without God's faithfulness, amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are the merciful. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou wilt show thyself merciful. Upright, we've seen mercy defined. Mercy picture. Is it pretty good where you're sitting? It's awful good right here today. I try to think, Brother Houston, when I get in this pulpit, I might be preaching my last one. Honey, I believe a king's coming. Amen. I'm getting close to the shore one way or the other. Amen. Whether he comes for all of us or whether he just gets, comes for me. And I'm excited about serving the Lord. In these days, amen. I want you to see this next thing is mercy needed. You say, preacher, what do you mean mercy needed? Well, first of all, the sinner needs mercy. You remember the the, the, the parable of the publican and the Pharisee? I I, I won't get this exactly right. I'm not going to turn over and read it for the sake of time. But the Pharisee said something like this. said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not as other men are. I fast twice in the week and I give tithes of all that I possess. He was a bragging man, braggadocious. I believe that kind of spirit makes God sick. Amen. I mean, listen to me. He said, I thank you that I'm not even as this publican. The word of God said that publican wouldn't even so much as turn his eyes toward heaven, but he smote upon his breast and he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Hallelujah for the day. I saw myself a sinner in need of God's mercy, amen. And the word of God said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. I'm gonna tell you, there's a generation, beloved, that thinks they're so wise and they're gonna feel like fools one day, beloved, when they realize that wisdom comes from God and that God had it all mapped out, and all they had to do was come and trust his son, come and say yes to the Lamb of God. They could have been saved by the grace of God. Mercy's needed. The sinner needs mercy. But let me give you this, beloved. The saints need mercy. Turn with me to Psalm 51. I'm not not going to preach a lot right here, but I'm going to tell you something right now. If you've lived for God very long at all, You needed mercy. You needed God 
to have mercy on you. David messed up. You know all about it. You know about how he, 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 he messed up. I, I guess his first sin was the sin of omission. He should have been on the battlefield and he wasn't. He was at home up on the roof and he looked, he lusted, he committed adultery. He was deceitful, committed murder. He say, preacher, God didn't, uh, David didn't murder him. No, I say, yes, he did. When you read the story, he said, I, he told Joab, he said he sent the letter to Joab by, uh, oh my goodness, uh, uh, help me with his name, Brother Steve. Uh, Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. Thank you, Brother Steve. He sent the letter by Uriah's own hand out there to Joab on the battlefield. And he said, I want you to take him into the hottest part of the battle and then retire from him. He didn't have a chance. Amen. And, and so he died. And, and David thinks he's got it all covered up. Then along comes Nathan. He tells him the story about the rich man, the poor man. The little, poor man just got one little lamb. And a traveler comes by. You know the parable or the story, I should say. That's not a parable really. But anyway, the, 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 this man kills the poor man's lamb. And it, David gets ill when he hears the story. He says, the man that's done this thing shall surely die. And Nathan, that blessed man of God, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with David and said, Thou art the man. You're the one I'm talking to. You're the one that's standing in need of mercy. Well, in Psalm chapter 51, how did David start his prayer? He said, have mercy upon me, oh God. Amen. Have mercy. Have you ever thought something you shouldn't have thought? You found yourself saying, have mercy upon me, oh God. Have you ever seen something you shouldn't have seen? Have you ever heard something you shouldn't have heard? Have you ever said something you shouldn't have said? Have you ever done something you shouldn't have done? I'll tell you what I believe, beloved. Listen, I believe the closer that we get to God, the more sensitive we become to our wrongdoings. We don't really need a Nathan to come because we got the Holy Ghost living in us. And he'll let us know when we blow it. We can fall on our face. So have mercy on me, O oh God, knowing that he's not on vacation, knowing that the line's not busy, knowing that he's a faithful high priest, knowing that he knows exactly where we are and exactly what we've done, and yet he's ready to give mercy. Hallelujah. The saints need mercy. Have mercy upon me, O oh God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. How many believes he has a multitude of tender mercy? Beloved, I tell you tonight, I see mercy defined. All of this, Brother Steve, from one little verse, it just took off in my heart. I've chewed on it for three days. And sat down with my Bible this afternoon and let God to speak to my heart. We see mercy defined, mercy pictured, mercy needed. But then I want you to see this. There's mercy obtained. You see, the word of God said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That means you get a hold of it. Thank God for something you can get a hold of. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There's something you can get a hold of tonight. It's called mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Beloved, if we've ever been in the time of need, it's where we're living today. We need God. We need his mercy. Let me give you this. How many believes the Apostle Paul, the one that, of course, was Saul of Tarsus, the one that was going down there and, and, and getting people and, and jailing them and, and persecuting them and thinking he was doing God a service. How many believes God turned his life around? Watch what the Bible said now. Let me show you what 
Paul said in 1 Timothy, he's talking to the young preacher. He said, who was before, he's talking about himself, 1 Timothy 1.13, a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy. You want to know why I'm not in the same dives I used to be in? Because I obtained mercy. You want to know why I'm not doing the same things I used to do? Because I obtained mercy. I'm telling you, Paul is telling Timothy, son, there was a time when it was like this, but I obtained mercy. The word of God said, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Watch in verse 16 of the same chapter. He said, how be it? For this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long-suffering. Beloved, listen, if there's anything we need, we need to be more merciful. We need to be more long-suffering. I don't believe, Brother Steve, that we can ever be more like Christ than we're show- when we're showing mercy to another. Listen to me. Y'all believe that? Think about this tonight. If I'll be it for this cause, I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. There's mercy obtained. I don't like to end a message with negative, but I must tonight. Let me show you what I mean. God's mercy is offered tonight to the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But what God's put in my heart tonight is to close with this thought. Mercy refused. One thing God will never do is force his mercy on someone. He lays it out there. It's there for whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. You know, I was thinking about Brother Colt and the prisons, Brother Wayne going over there to the jail when I saw something on the news this morning. Listen, this, this is not all over or always the case, but we've got some crazy people in America that believe you ought to put a woman in jail for cutting somebody's hair and that you ought to let them out of jail because there's a virus in the jail. How many knows what I just said? You say, I don't like it. Well, I'm sorry. I'm telling the truth. You ain't got no business letting somebody out of jail to go hurt somebody else just because they got a virus or because the virus is in the jail. And so, Brother Cold, it showed them on the news this morning. They're taking a mask and passing it around. They're, they're trying to get sick because they get the ID. If we can get sick, we can get out of jail. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's something wrong with that way of thinking. But there's a whole lot more wrong with the way of thinking than some of those on the outside of the jail. I'm telling you tonight, beloved, listen to me. God is offering mercy to every man, woman, boy, and girl. And yet mercy is refused. Agrippa refused God's mercy. Felix refused God's mercy. The rich young ruler, Jesus told him what he needed to do. He said, go sell all you have. The Bible said he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He refused God's mercy. I I wonder if if that ruler could be back tonight. I wonder. Something just crossed my mind. I have no Bible for this. But what if he is the one that Jesus was speaking of when he said a certain rich man? You know, that's possible. I won't be dogmatic about that. He died, and in hell he lifted his eyes. Wonder tonight if there's anything that he had in his possession that he would trade 
for an opportunity to receive God's mercy once again. But it's gone. That opportunity is gone. I see mercy refused. There's some who re refuse to receive mercy. And this, I think, is even worse. You say, preacher, what could be worse than someone refusing to receive mercy? I think I have Bible for it. Turn to Matthew chapter 18, and I'm done. Matthew chapter number 18. I'll be watching again Sunday night, Brother Steve, at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Amen. Brother Steve said he learned a lot. I'm not interested in learning. I'm just going to keep standing up in front of Brother Richard and Brother Jim. They can do the best they can with what they got to do with. Amen. Watch this now. Here's something I think it's even worse. Matthew chapter 18, let's look at verse 21. The Bible said, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until 70, until, not until seven times, but until 70 times seven. I believe that's 490. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which would take account of his servants. But when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. That's another way of saying have mercy on me and I will pay thee. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Look at me tonight, everybody. How many have been born again? You've been forgiven the greatest debt this world's ever known. That's a sin debt. That's a whole lot more than 10,000 talents. We've all been forgiven a sin debt. Now watch this. This to me is even worse. The Bible said, but the same servant went out and he found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me that that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Are you getting the picture? Amen. Beloved, listen to me tonight. Mercy is refused. Some refuse to receive mercy, but there are some that refuse to show mercy. I believe that's worse. If I've experienced the mercy and the grace of God and know what it is to have my debt forgiven, and I refuse to show mercy to another, I believe that's worse than refusing his mercy, to receive his mercy. The word of God said here, and when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou, what's that next word? Now wait a minute, <clears throat> wait a minute, wait a minute. Brother Ike, I said a while ago, I don't believe there's a time that we can be more like Jesus than if we're showing mercy to another. There's times your wife needs you to show her mercy. There's more times you need your wife to show you mercy. Say amen, Brother Ike, amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Now watch this. I said a while ago, and I believe it with all of my heart, if God has forgiven us, God has showed us mercy. The Bible said the word right there is wicked. So I believe there's not a time in our life when we can be more like Christ than when we're showing mercy. But I'm not sure that there's anything that we could do that would be more wicked, Brother Grizzle, than to have received the mercy of God and refuse to show that mercy to another. 
I don't remember the story exactly. You'll get the gist of it. But I heard a story about a man that came in. The church was full. He looked to his right and he looked to his left. Half the pews weren't roped off either. But there, there was just nowhere to sit, Brother Steve. The man came in off the street. He was dressed ragged. He didn't smell too good. And he came up and the preacher had already started his message. And he sat down Indian style right in front of the communion table. Now, I can't sit down Indian style. It'd take a tow truck to get me up, amen, if I tried it. But one of the deacons got up, Brother Houston. The old women began to whisper, he'll get him out of here. He'll straighten this out. We ain't got nothing to worry about. That old deacon come up there and sat down Indian style right alongside of him. You know what that man did? He showed mercy. He said he might sit up there, but he ain't going to sit up there alone. You know what sinners need? Same thing saints need. They need somebody to show mercy. I mean, he's glad you come tonight. Whew, glory to God, I can't wait to Sunday. If Jesus don't come, I'm going to get to preach again. I was hoping, thinking a while ago when I was talking to Brother Don that he might want to come tonight. And, and then I was thinking, you know, this was early in the afternoon. I was thinking, you know, if Brother Don comes tonight, we'll just turn Brother Don loose. He's such a blessing. And I got to study and I, I thought, Lord, I'm going to have to preach tonight. Whether Brother Don comes or not, it's so big in my heart. I'm so glad I got to share it with you tonight. I tell you what, God... Sister Jerry, Brother Kenny, Brother Mike, we've got to try to go to these families just looking for somebody to show mercy. Oh, you say, preacher, they're on drugs and everything else. It's the grace of God you ain't. God showed you mercy. They don't need somebody to put a foot on their throat. They need somebody to show compassion, somebody to show some mercy. Thank you for coming tonight. Father in heaven, sure do love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for putting up with us. Help us, Lord, tonight. Lord, just to be looking for opportunities to show mercy, whether it's on the job, whether it's in the grocery store, whether it's in the neighborhood. Lord, you said, blessed are the merciful And so saying, Lord, you're saying, blessed are those that'll do what my son did. Will show mercy to others. Help me, God, not to be labeled a wicked servant. But help me, Lord, to be more like Jesus till you come, till you take us home. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, <clears throat> We'll see y'all when Sunday morning.